a lot of modern philosophers call us storytelling animals, right? So you have the Aristotelian um, sort of like a, a political animal. You've heard logical animal. You've heard these other things. But I love that narrative of a storytelling animal. It's just yeah. within us. Yeah. What, what, is, what is that? And like, where does yes, that come well, from? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We'll, uh, it's the, the thing that uh, uh, we interpret the world uh, as a place where uh, people do something and try to achieve something. And uh, hearing stories is uh, like having, uh, getting experience about life. Mm. So not only with biographical film, but through a biographical film, at the end of the end, uh, I want to know if uh, someone was fulfilled or not fulfilled in, in his life. So uh, for biographical films, uh, I think it's very important also for the success in some way to give an answer to this. Was this life fulfilled or not? Um, uh, yesterday we were saying something about uh, the social network. Hmm. The film, the social network about Zuckerberg, that structurally is a tragedy, mm -hmm. says clearly not. Mm -hmm. uh, this life is not fulfilled. He, he begins with a mistake and he ends alone. But uh, other films say yes uh, in a clear way, or other films uh, sometimes make the mistake of remaining uh, uh, in the middle and they are not clear, they have not a clear theme, etc. But uh, what happens in a very strong way for uh, uh, biographical stories is something that we look for at, at the end in any story. Uh, we want to understand what is worth fight for, what is worth uh, look for, what is more important between two different goods, on what is the less bad of two different uh, uh, risks or two different evils. So um, for this reason, the stories give us experience. I am happy that this is more and more recognized also for, uh, at least in Italy, also for uh, general aspects of uh, uh, education. Mm. I published a, a short article, it could be 25 years ago or more, uh, saying that, uh, uh, stressing the importance uh, of uh, literature, uh, but also cinema, good cinema and good television for uh, helping people to uh, also in their future profession, because uh, good literature gives you an understanding of human life, uh, of uh, the different aspect uh, of existence, of life, etc., that can be very, very important for uh, lawyers, medical doctors, nurses, educators, uh, any kind of professional, business people, any kind of professional. This helps a lot, and, I, and I'm happy that, for example, in many American universities, you have these courses on the great literature, great, the great books that we, at the moment, don't have. It's very, very, very rare. It's the study of literature is much more, let's say, technical, but not uh, on the content itself or sure. what it says about human life. Yeah, and that's that's it, right? It's it's peeking into something of anthropology of what it means to be a human person, right? Yeah. And I think then there's a huge weight or, or responsibility on the storytellers themselves about how to do that right. Right. I mean, this has been a debate since Plato as far as, yeah. you know, what is what does storytelling do? What do poetics do uh, yeah. to the human person? So what's your, your insights or, or thoughts when it comes to the responsibility of the storyteller, especially when it comes to moral issues or ethical issues, these kinds of things? Obviously, the responsibility is very, very strong because uh, um, a good story can change the life of a person. Uh, um, a good uh, novel, a good film, a good TV series can really change the life. For example, I, uh, there is, in, in Italy, there is a, a writer that is, one, that is a, also a teacher. He's, uh, his name is Alessandro D'Avenia. Uh, he's very well known. He's a best-selling novelist, but he's still also a teacher uh, in high school because he wants to have contact with real people, not only go around uh, on uh, festivals and <laughs> shows, etc., and uh, he says that uh, he decided to be a teacher watching uh, Dead Poets Society. Hmm. Uh, 
uh, that, that was the thing that changed his life. Mm. But I'm sure millions of people can say something similar with different things, with different uh, uh, novels or so. Really, stories can change life. And this is uh, the basis of the responsibility of a storyteller. Also because uh, uh, a story, that we like it or not, has, uh, is immersed in that it's full of some kind of rhetoric. Mm -hmm. So a story stresses something and probably hides something else. Um, I was mentioning before uh, the social network, for example. Uh, the social network stresses the fact that Mark Zuckerberg at the end of the story is alone. It makes us forget that he has probably 30 or 40 billion dollars. You don't think about that. Yeah. You only think that he's, this poor guy is alone, he has no friends. And uh, for example, the Godfather at the end of the story makes you root for uh, a man who is a killer and who kills all this enemy. And I'm sure 90%, the film was structurally intended, uh, it's one of the greatest film of all <laughs> history, but uh, it was initially intended as a tragedy. Mm -hmm. But probably the writers were so concerned with the fact that the audience would not stay with the main character, that they give always very strong reason why he does what he does. And from some moment on, he kills people or he ordered to kill people. So at the end of the film, you sometimes forget that he is he's a killer and you are happy because he's the head <laughs> of, the, of all the families. Uh, he has won, he's the king. You feel he has become the king while he has become a devil. Mm. Uh? Mm -hmm. And this is the very strong and very well done rhetoric, uh, rhetoric of the story. So it happens in many different aspects also. Uh, one of the films that I use a lot for teaching uh, uh, love stories and romantic comedies is uh, You've Got Mail uh, with Tom Hanks and mm -hmm. Ryan. If you had never been in New York and you see that film, you think that New York is a, is a tiny town uh, <laughs> with uh, uh, everyone knows each other in the neighborhood, etc. But if you compare that with the Gotham City that is uh, in some other films, they look two, two different uh, uh, towns. It's rhetoric in the sense that uh, they show you something and they don't show you all the other side. Eh? But this is obviously very, very strong uh, in, uh, in the, about the choices of the character. Mm -hmm. eh? So, uh, or sometimes they can uh, tell you or they want to make you feel that the best thing for uh, someone uh, is, uh, I don't know, to kill uh, someone who is old uh, and sick in favor of uh, euthanasia. There are at the moment a good number, especially of European film, in favor of euthanasia, like a form of love. But uh, this is rhetoric. So it's the power of, of film. They can convince you of something that is really true, like a beautiful mind that tells you that for a person it's not so important to be so brilliant intellectually how much is important to have someone to love and to be loved. And this is my personal opinion, very true. Or they can be able to convince you that about something that is really wrong. So mm -hmm. this is a delicate tool. And for this reason, we need very good and honest and truthful storytellers.